What's up everybody, this is Anti Hero with Player One Gaming, and today I'm going to be doing a review for Cyberpunk 2077. And no, it's not the year 2020, we did not just go back in time. No, myself and many others on YouTube are reviewing this game right now because of the massive update that just dropped. Now, in case you haven't heard, CD Projekt Red has released a 2.0 version of the game to go along with the release of their one and only DLC expansion, Phantom Liberty, of which I will be doing a separate review in the coming days. This update is so big, so game-changing, that it's really more of a reboot than a patch, and it's done a lot to make this game, quite frankly, the game that it should have always been upon release. So, I'm going to discuss many of the new features found in the game, give you my thoughts on them, and tell you how I think the game stacks up to its original release, and if it's finally a game that's worth dropping your hard-earned cash on. Because, let's face it, one could make a valid argument that the original launch version of this game was definitely not worth it. And believe me, there's no one that was more disappointed than me with the original game because my excitement and anticipation for this game was through the roof. And it wasn't because of that giant roaring hype train that was rolling through the gaming community during the development of this title. No, for me, I'm a cyberpunk veteran. I was actually a huge fan of the original Cyberpunk 2020 tabletop RPG. I was like maybe 11 or 12 years old, sometime back in the 90s. I came across the Cyberpunk 2020 rulebook in my local comic shop, and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. I held on to that book for years, and I ran many cyberpunk games in that time. So when I found out way back in, I think, 2013, I, I can't believe it was 10 years ago, but when I found out that the team behind the Witcher series was making a massive cyberpunk CRPG, I was ecstatic. And that joy and anticipation and excitement only built in these huge seven-year development cycle leading up to the game's release. So I, like so many of us, was very disappointed with what we ended up getting. Now, don't get me wrong, I still got plenty of playing time in, and CDPR did make many improvements since launch, which drastically helped the game be more playable, but what we wanted was more than just playable. This game was meant to be epic, and it wasn't. So, the question is, with this 2.0 reboot, has the game achieve that epic status? Does it finally, three years after launch, live up to the hype and my high expectations as a fan of the original IP? Well, let's find out. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over all the major changes to the game and what I think about them. I'm also gonna be touching on one thing that I think CDPR changed that I think was a major misstep by them. Overall, these changes are great, but there is one thing that I really didn't like. So I'll go into detail on that later in the video. Now, before getting into all the additions they made with the gameplay mechanics, I just wanted to touch upon the graphics real quick. Cyberpunk was always a beautiful game, but for PC users, they've introduced improvements to the ray tracing abilities called ray reconstruction, which makes this already beautiful game even more stunning. I wouldn't say that the character models look much better, but the environment looks stunning, and in my opinion, that really helps with the immersion, which is so important with a game like this. Now, for the gameplay changes, there are a lot of them. So, we'll start with the combat-related changes. First, the cops. The NCPD. Now, if you recall, in the previous edition, the cops were kind of a joke. Sometimes they wouldn't go after you, even if you committed a crime right in front of them. And if they did go after you, you'd just drive away laughing and that would usually be the end of it. Well, now you'll find the NCPD scattered across the city, patrolling at crime scenes, shaking people down maybe, and if you actually commit a crime in front of them, they'll interfere. At least they're supposed to, but don't be surprised if the occasional bug still comes up for you here. Anyway, this will prompt a GTA-style chase, where you have a wanted level, represented by one to five stars, and if you keep doing bad stuff, your wanted level will go up. The police will chase you, it'll get more intense, they'll bring out armored and weaponized vehicles, set up roadblocks, and if you're lucky enough to survive up to five stars, they'll send out the max tack unit to take you out. And then of course, if you lay low, remain unseen long enough, they'll eventually give up, which will be signaled by the new police radio scanner they've added, 
and you can go about your usual business of being Night City's number one hoodlum. Now, this should be a time to mention some of the vehicular changes made to the game. Vehicle combat is now a very real thing in Cyberpunk, and no longer limited to a couple of cutscenes that they had before. Now you can hang out of your car and shoot to your heart's delight. You can shoot parked, you can shoot driving, you can even get a weaponized vehicle, whether stealing one from the police or by some other means, and you'll have a gun turret mounted on the car, unlimited ammo, and they're just a whole lot of fun. So between the police chases and the vehicle combat, these changes add a whole nother dimension to the game that wasn't there before. It feels very GTA, hence everyone calling it GTA style, but that's okay. As mentioned, they have added the weaponized vehicles, and of course given it that Night City flair, so it does kind of set itself apart from GTA a little bit, but at the end of the day, I love it and it really boosts the game's fun factor. So, a couple other combat related changes to go over. Number one, stamina. Stamina is no longer a thing that gets drained by sprinting or jumping. It now gets drained by attacking. It's represented by a yellow bar at the top of the screen, and when you shoot or attack with a melee weapon, the bar is drained. So if you're holding down the trigger of a machine gun, for example, not only will the bar drain, but it also affects your ability to shoot straight, to hold your sights on a target. Overall, I like this change a lot. But let me be clear. I like the addition of the new mechanic, not necessarily the subtraction of the old one. Why couldn't the yellow bar also become drained when we run and jump? I mean, why can V run from the cops or some unsavory gang members forever without ever getting tired? I don't know. It seems like anything that should make you tired should drain your stamina. I'm not quite sure why they approached it like it had to be one or the other. Another change that I'm actually not really a huge fan of is the health and grenades. They are now rechargeable. That's right, they're no longer a finite resource in your inventory. You get a couple of them to use. Once you use them, you wait a short while, and then they recharge. I think CDPR really wanted to simplify and streamline the loot and inventory, which I don't disagree with at all. I think that they needed to do that. I just don't think that this was the best solution. Now, this isn't a huge deal, and I'm sure some people will like this change, but personally, I don't like things in games that, narratively speaking, doesn't make sense or follow any real-world logic. And just like V being able to run forever, why should there be an infinite amount of health packs and grenades that just simply need to be recharged? Again, this isn't going to affect my enjoyment of the game in the long run, but it does bump me just a little bit. Finally, there is a lot of rebalancing that was done. Things like main boss fights and NPCs just not being quite as stupid as they once were. So that's always a welcome change. So they also made a lot of other small changes that are combat related. If you want to see all the details, I suggest you go to the Cyberpunk website and you can check out the patch notes there. But for now, we're going to move to what I consider one of the best changes that were made to the game. And that was the perk tree. They have completely redesigned the perks in this game. There are now fewer perks, but the ones that they have have a bigger impact on the gameplay. First off, the perk tree has been completely uncluttered. It's much easier to navigate and more importantly, much easier to build the type of character that you want to build. The tree has been divided into both horizontal and vertical sections. Vertically speaking, when you first start the game, you will only have access to the ones at the bottom of your screen. As you level up your associated attribute number, you'll unlock the sections that are higher up in the tree. Now, the perk tree is also split into three horizontally. And these three different columns all focus on a different aspect of your abilities. For example, in reflexes, the middle column focuses kind of on general reflex abilities that have to do with dashing and being quick and agile in combat while the left column focuses on assault rifles and submachine guns, and then the one to the right is all about the blades. So this makes things much easier when you're trying to put together a specific character build, like an assassin ninja who's good with blades and net running. I know exactly where to go in these perk trees and what needs to be unlocked. Furthermore, having less perks just makes it way easier to navigate, find what I want, and then get back to the game. Not just that, but the perks themselves are so much better, more impactful. You just feel it in the game when you're playing. 
It really adds to the excitement of, okay, I just leveled up, let's stop everything and get to that perk tree so I can build my PC up more. And this was something that the original game was definitely lacking. And yeah, the abilities that you can get from these perks are just way better. Some examples of these are the ability to dash with the reflex perks, including dashing in midair, which is really game changing on how mobile you can be now. There's something called adrenaline rush for the body perks that will recharge your health. And there's some really cool net running perks, which I'll touch upon a little bit more when I go over the net running as a whole. For the cool attribute, they completely did away with the cold blood perk, which good riddance to that, I was never a huge fan. It was a passive ability that I could never really quite put my finger on how much it was actually helping. So they replaced it with abilities that are a lot more tangible that you can feel while you're in combat. Oh, and they also added some vehicle perks that allow you to quick hack vehicles and one that even allows you to enter and exit vehicles like a boss. If you ever wanted to jump off a motorcycle going full speed with little to no consequences, now's your chance. I highly recommend you take this perk. And one last thing for this section, there are now passive skills that gets leveled up in the game. They're broken up into five different categories. They are Headhunter, Netrunner, Shinobi, Solo, and Engineer. You level up these skills just by playing the game. It's completely passive. There's nothing specific that you need to do. You just play the game, it levels up for you, and you get benefits as you do so. Now, if you are starting a game from scratch, there's not much you have to do here. But if you are picking up where you left off before, you'll be prompted with this screen. You'll have one chance to redistribute your attribute points however you like, then you'll go shopping, buying all the perks you can afford. Quick side note on this though, I actually really recommend starting from scratch. As the game is just so different now, it's definitely worth building a new character from the ground up. So if there's maybe a character background you haven't tried yet, I recommend loading up a new game to best experience all the changes that 2.0 brings. And before we move away from perks, I did just wanna say one thing in regards to the new respecking rules, which I am not a huge fan of. So now, instead of having to reset all of your perks to do a respec for a cost, you can now reset your perks one at a time for free and then put it into something else. I have no doubt that this is going to be a polarizing subject. Many of you out there will love this ability and I totally understand why. However, I'm a little bit old school and I'm not really always on board with the unlimited, consequence-free respecking that's being found in a lot of CRPGs right now. With this new system, you can essentially take out one perk, put it into something else temporarily, and then you can just put it back into the other one when you're done doing whatever you have to do. Look, I know it's just a one-player game, and however you want to play is up to you, of course, but I also think that RPG games should come with some consequences to your decisions. It's just my personal opinion, but I just don't like that you can give and take away skills so easily. At least before there was a consequence in having to pay some eddies and then respec your entire character from scratch. So again, it's just my opinion, and I get where you're coming from if you don't agree, but personally, I do not like this change. There's also some changes being made to net running. A lot of rebalancing was done. The RAM costs, damage and upload time, a lot of those things have been rebalanced. They changed some of the effects of uh, some of the quick hacks. And one of the bigger changes that was made is you can no longer use breach protocol on enemies. So breach protocol, if you remember, is the little puzzle that they have you solve that allows you to hack in to another computer. You can now just do this at access points and not on enemies. I think that the reason that they made this change is that as fun as those little puzzles are, having to do it over and over again definitely got to be a little repetitive, and I feel like having to do it in the middle of combat just kind of slowed things down. So I am a big fan of them taking this out. I don't know if everyone will agree, but I think that this will speed up combat and make the game a little bit more fast paced. Also, I did mention the net running perks. To go along with all the other cool new perks, there are also some really cool net running perks that they added. For example, one of my favorites is you can now acquire the ability to queue multiple quick hacks on a single enemy, all in one motion. So I love that, very cool addition. Another example of a cool net running perk they added is the overclock mode, which allows you to upload quick hacks by consuming health if you have insufficient RAM. 
So you might be in a situation where you really want to use a quick hack on somebody, but you're out of RAM, but you have plenty of health. So you can dip into that health and use that to still pull off the quick hack. So that's pretty cool. I do like those changes and I'm finding that quick hacking is even more fun than before. Okay, the next really big change that was made was to cyberware. Now you go to the Ripper dock and you are presented with this screen. It's very similar to the last cyberware screen, but with a couple notable differences, mainly these two meters that you see on the left and the right. We'll touch on the one on the right first. This is the new way of determining your character's armor. That's right. Armor is no longer determined by clothing, but by cyberware. I love this change. If you haven't already figured out, I like things in my game to track logically and be somewhat realistic. And it's always bothered me the way that it was set up before. Like, oh look, I just got this awesome new hoodie and it has the stopping power of a flak jacket. It's like, what? That doesn't make any sense at all. Not to mention, everyone, especially at the start of the game, would have their characters looking silly as hell just to get some decent armor, which is so ridiculous, especially in a game where cool is king. I also just really want my PC to have the look I want them to have, without game mechanics getting in the way. And now, they can. Clothing no longer has armor, no longer has mod slots, and most don't have any special abilities, though you can still find some clothes out there that have extra bonuses and stuff, and that's cool, that's fine. I'm just glad to see that the armor class shifts to cyberware, which makes just a whole lot more sense to me. Now, to the left-hand side of your screen, this meter shows how much cyberware you can install on your body. In Cyberpunk, you aren't supposed to be able to get unlimited amounts of cyberware, hence cyberpsychosis. So I love to see this change. As your PC levels up, and if they invest in tech perks, they will increase how much cyberware they'll be able to get. Again, this is just like the original tabletop game, with each piece of cyberware having a cost that contributes to your limit. Another thing is that you can level up your existing cyberware with the use of components that you find in the game. This gives your character another way to increase their power as they level up, and I like it. With these changes, cyberware plays a much more pivotal role in the game, as it should have been from the very start. So yeah, I love everything that they did here. I think the perks and cyberware changes are by far what I'm most happy with with this 2.0 update. Now, even though those are all of the major changes, there are a ton of little changes they made as well. So I'm not gonna go over all of them. You can look at the patch notes if you wanna see everything that they changed. But as an example of one of the little things that they did, they removed excess loot in the game. Now, some may hear that and think, wait, I love loot, don't do that. But trust me, the looting was so cluttered. There was so much loot that it was kind of saturated and it made it feel kind of meaningless. It made inventory management kind of a pain in the ass, and it would distract from the quest. You'd have a PC yelling, come on, we gotta get out of here, and you'd be like, hold on for 20 minutes while I loot every last corner of this place. So that's no longer the case. There's less loot, but again, like the perks, loot that feels a little bit more meaningful. And that's kind of an example that's a microcosm of this entire 2.0 experience. It just feels better. The game feels cleaner and smoother. All of these little changes that have been made, in addition to the large ones, have had a big impact on how playable the game is itself. The immersion factor. Sure, there's still occasionally an NPC that'll float in midair or items that you can't pick up unless you're standing in the exact right spot. But overall, this game just feels so much better, so much smoother to play. And Honestly, that was my biggest gripe with the original one. The launch version of the game just felt clunky. And I'm very happy to report that I do feel that that clunkiness has been removed from the game. But I still do believe that CD Projekt Red did make one real misstep with the changes made to this update. And it's kind of buried in the patch notes and being overlooked by a lot of people. But in the patch notes, the change reads like this. All NPCs now scale to your level. Enemy difficulty is no longer dependent on what area of Night City you're in. So yeah, enemy difficulty scales up with you as you level up. Why is this a bad thing? Well, first off, why is it even a thing? Why is this necessary? I really have no idea. I get that enemy difficulty shouldn't be dependent on what area of Night City you're in. Fine, change that. But why this change? 
This is something that Diablo 4 did, and it's a big reason why I and so many others got bored with that game after playing it for like a week. Look, part of the fun of RPGs is that some of your opponents are less powerful than you, and some are more powerful. Sometimes you just completely mop the floor with some poor bastards that can't keep up, and it's great. And other times, you're in over your head. You have to pull all the stops out to survive. Sometimes you even have to retreat. But what happens then? You level up, you get better, and you come back and show them what's up. Now, you could fight an opponent at level 1, and in a different playthrough, fight that very same opponent at level 10, and it'll feel exactly the same? No. Sorry. Bad move, CD Projekt Red. I really hope this doesn't contribute to a trend in CRPGs, because it's really not welcomed by anyone I know. Unlike the other things that I mentioned that might be somewhat polarizing, I don't know of anyone who wants this change. I mean, if you agree with the enemy scaling up with you when you level up, feel free to let me know why in the comments, but personally, I just hate it. This is a big reason why I stopped playing Diablo 4. It made the game feel repetitive and boring. Now, will it do the same for Cyberpunk? Not as much in my opinion. I think because Cyberpunk has a much more engaging story and engaging quests, like it's not just a hack and slash game, I feel because of that it will cut down on how much this will have an impact. I also think that the hard and very hard difficulties are legitimately challenging. So just that fact alone, the fact that the game will be a challenge, which Diablo 4 was not in my opinion, will also help as well. But more than anything, I think this negatively affects replayability. This is a long game, and this new feature will have an impact, making the game at times feel repetitive and kind of like a grind. And I think by the end of it all, when most players finish this game, many won't be looking on doing another run. And I think this new feature adds to that. I'm not sure why Blizzard and now CDPR have added this to their games. Like I said, I certainly hope it's not a trend in CRPGs that we continue to see. I mean, let's face it, some enemies are supposed to be too hard to fight at early levels. You're supposed to be like, nah man, we can't face this dude yet, we're not ready. That is part of the RPG experience, and I think that most players out there would agree with me on that. Now, does this change break the game? No. I'm still giving this a favorable review. 2.0 overall brings with it some very welcome changes, and I would say finally makes this game live up to the hype. The game finally feels epic enough to be worthy of that cyberpunk banner, and yes, I would say it's most definitely worth your money and your time. So if you haven't bought it or played it yet, now's the time to pull the trigger on that. And if you haven't played it in a while, I highly recommend picking it back up for another try. If I was doing a 1 out of 10 scale, I'd say the original game was a 5, and then after 3 years of various patches, maybe they brought it up to a 6. But now I would say that the game rests comfortably at an 8. It's not perfect and never will be, but it's at least a lot closer to what we were promised and what we were expecting, and I would certainly recommend it to anyone who's a fan of the genre. Of course, there is the DLC Phantom Liberty that expands even further on the already massive game. I'm currently finishing that up right now, and I will be doing a separate review very soon, as well as some more cyberpunk videos in the future like build guides with a new perk system and all that. So if you want to check those out, please remember to hit that subscribe button to be notified when those drop. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. That really helps me out. Thanks very much, guys. I do appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Supreme.